we are going to discuss about the subject SCPA architecture and applications. Unit 3 to building blocks of SCPAs as well as CPIDs. First of all, we have to know the, some information about the SCPA. What is SCPA? SCPA means Field Programmable Data Array. We have uh, studied this SCPA in Unit 1 and 2. In this unit, we are going to specially uh, concentrate on the building blocks of the different kinds of SCPA provided by different vendors. So, we have first of all, uh, we have two types of SCPA, one is reprogrammable SCPA, another one is one-time programmable SCPA. In reprogrammable SCPA, it is based on the memory, that is the use of the SRAM memory with uh, some uh, basic logic. Whereas in on-time programmable SCPA, the basic logic cell is uh, based on the multiplexer. And also it uses the anti-queue. Because it is one-time programmable, so it uses the anti-queue based programming technology. See, whoever uh, providing this one-time programmable SCPA or Actel as well as Actel as well as a quick logic. These two vendors or manufacturers providing this one time programmable SCPA. That means we can buy the SCPA uh, kit and we can program this SCPA in our field. But it is only one time. Okay. So again this is not able to reconfigure that. But the first one is reprogrammable SCPA. Uh, in this what happens? This kind of SCPA can be reprogrammed in any number of times. It is not limited. It is infinite number of times we can reprogram it. So whoever is providing this kind of SCPA are a Xilinx, Xilinx, Lattice, Atmel, Altra. These all the vendors or manufacturers um, developing the reprogrammable SCPA. See, out of these all the vendors, Xilinx as well as Altra, both are uh, occupying the 60% of the share in the SCPA market. So, out of 100% rate, 60% of the market is occupied by Xilinx as well as Altra. First topic in Unit 3, we are going to discuss about programming technologies for SCPA. That is how the SVGA is reconfigurable by using different programming technology. So, um, the basic element which is present in the SVGA are the first one is programmable logic cell, the second one is programmable interconnect and third one is IO block. So, in this the programmable logic cell within an SVGA are configured by using different programming technologies. So, what are all the technology we are using here is, the first one is Antifuse, which is used in Actel SVGA and second programmable uh, technology is Static RAM, which is used in Xilinx SVGA and third one is EEPROM as well as EEPROM in Altra CPLD, that is Complex Programmable Logic Devices, they are using the EEPROM as well as EEPROM technology. And the programmable interconnect, usually this interconnect is nothing but the wire, it is programmable, is used to connect between any two logic cells. So the programmable interconnects are always used to make the connection between two programmable logic cells. So we have uh, different kinds of interconnecting architecture also, that is we are going to study in the fourth unit. But simply you have to know the intro of this routing architecture that is segmented channel routing as well as LCA interconnect architecture. So these two are used in different NCPAs that we are going to see in the fourth unit. Next we are going to see one by one how the antifuse uh, is used to program your basic logic cells, static RAM, EEPROM and EEPROM we are going to see. First, antifuse technology. See, the antifuse is the opposite to regular fuse. Actually, in fuse, it is normally it is in the closed form. The switch is closed in the uh, fuse. Whenever if you are applying the or programming the 
fuse it will be not open okay that is the concept of fuse but anti fuse is opposite to regular uh, fuse it is normally it is an open the switch is normally open whenever if we are try to apply the um, large amount of current or programming the anti fuse it will close the switch how it will close mean for example if you are taking the poly diffusion anti fuse it has three layers this is your um, bottom layer this is your bottom layer and this is your top layer in between that we have the onu that is dielectric see here this onu dielectric act as a insulator and top layer as well as the bottom layer act as a conductor okay generally if you have the in, uh, insulator means it will produce infinite resistance so normally anti fuse it will provide the um, large amount of resistance in between the top layer as well as the bottom layer whenever if you want to program it you have to apply the large amount of current that current will melt this onu that is insulator so due to that what happen top layer as well as the bottom layer both will be connected together thereby permanently it will be touched together which will produce the some resistance low resistance initially it was infinite resistance then it will be reduces to very small amount of resistance because of its programming so anti fuse separate the interconnect wires on fpga and programmer blows an anti fuse to make a permanent connection see this process cannot be reversed once you a program it you cannot able to reverse it that's why it is called one time programmable so this type of anti fuse technology we are using in the actal fpga the next programming technology is static ram cell so in this you can see here in all the plays we have the uh, stack that is logic cell this is logic cell here also we have the logic cell and in all the four corners we have the logic cells in between the logic cells we have the programmable interconnect okay so in this we are using the sram technology it is based on the sram technology here you can see this sram can be used to um, turn on this fast transistor if we are keeping this sram to one this fast transistor will goes on so that this vertical line as well as this horizontal line will be connected together right so like this we can program this wires to make the connection between one logic cell to another logic cell here we can see another sram which can be used to control the any one input of the multiplexer so the sram can be used to control this multiplexer right so what is the advantage of using the static ram in this see here it is reprogrammable when compared to anti fuse technology it is reprogrammable and also it uses a standard cmos technology thereby we can reduce the area increase the speed and reduce the power consumption with a smaller geometry that is the advantage of using static ram and what is the disadvantages it is volatile that means whenever if you are switch around the power the data will be lost it won't show the data it won't preserve the data okay that is called volatile so in order to preserve the data we need external memory but additional area will be required for this so that is the drawback of static cell based programming technology see here in the sram what we have here is we have the um the sram can be constructed by using six transistors it's called six t sram see we have six transistors starting from m1 m2 m3 right m4 as well as m5 and m6 see this uh, wl is nothing but the word line whereas this bl is nothing but the vertical line right so in this see here whenever if you want to write the 
uh, data for example if we are having the data bl equal to 1 means bl bar equal to 0 we are going to write the data um, which can be stored in your inside of this is nothing but a flip flop the whole network is flip flop so in flip flop having the two states one is the output q right another one is q bar so here only the data will be stored so whenever if you want to write or read the data you have to apply the wl equal to 1 so if you are applying 1 what happens this transistor will goes on similarly this transistor also goes on so due to that what happens this one will be coming at this point so the node 2 will store the data 1 which is nothing but the VDD right VDD is nothing but logic 1 similarly here the 0 will be coming here at this point node 1 will store the logic 0 which is nothing but 0 volts ok so in this way we can write the uh, data in this See here whenever the 0 will be coming here at the node 1, this will be connected to M6 transistor, right? This will be connected to M6 transistor, thereby this M6 transistor will goes on. Through this, the supply will be connected through this uh, M6 and at this point, either Q will be maintained as 1. Similarly, in the node 2, having the logic 1 means, that one will be connected to here. So, this one will be connected to this M5 transistor as well as M1 transistor. So, due to this one, the M1 transistor will goes on. If it is on through this transistor, the ground will be connected here and the node 1 will be retain this 0 volts. So, the static RAM cell uses the positive feedback to preserve the data at node Q as well as Q bar. So, this is the way we can write the data. If you want to uh, read the data means, similar way you have to apply the word line equal to 1. Whatever the data stored in Q and Q bar will be, uh, you can see at the BL line as well as BL. Right? So, we can write and read the data from the Q and Q bar node. The next technology is e probe as well as e probe in complex programmable logic device. So, it is the non-volatile. Actually, how the programming is happening in this e probe as well as e probe is. See here, this is the symbol of e probe device. Okay. So, this uh, two lines indicate that we have two gates. That is, this is uh, nothing but the control gate. The second one is called as floating gate. So, we have two gates. So, it, it is called as floating gate uh, mass transistors. Okay. So, in this case, if you want to write the data, you have to apply the voltage which is greater than threshold voltage. So, if you are applying the more and more voltage, what happens? You know the channel will be created right between source and drain okay so the channel contains the minority carriers you are applying more and more vgs what happens the charge carriers will be attracted so it will be trapped into the floating gate the gate one act as the floating gate so all the charge carriers will be trapped to the gate one okay so uh, that means in this we have written the data state one okay so, if you are applying more VGS voltage, which is greater than VPN, the charge carriers will be trapped into the gate 1, which is nothing but the programming or writing the data of 1. Right? So, suppose if you want to read the data, if you want to read the data means, you have to apply the, again, the voltage between drain and source. Okay? Drain and source, we have to apply see all the charge carriers will be trapped into the gate. So, even though if you are applying the voltage between drain and source, the current will not flow because there is no channel is present here in between source and drain. So, the current will not flow. So, what is the meaning of that is if the current is not flowing here means, if the current is not flowing, it is zero means, we can say 
the gate the floating gate contains the charge carriers thereby we preserve the data of state 1 okay suppose if you are applying the uh, voltage between vds and ground means and if the current is flowing if the current is flowing in the sense if the current is not zero that means the current is flowing from drain to source means there will be a channel that means there is no charge carriers is present in the floating gate thereby we can say that it is written that the state is zero right so it is the non-volatile because it will preserve the data in the floating gate um, it does not require any power to preserve the data okay so that's why it is called non-volatile see the third diagram shows that the same concept but here instead of electrical signal we are giving the uv rays ultraviolet rays to write and read the operation of this uh, floating gate transistor okay so this kind of uh, device is called as e pro this device is called as e pro so both are based on the floating gate type transistor okay the advantages is it is non volatile and it is area efficient okay disadvantages it cannot be reprogrammed right it is it cannot be reprogrammed like a SRAM cell in infinite number of times right and you it is limited time we can program it but it is limited but anti fuse we could not able to reprogram it okay it uses the non standard CMOS technology so uh, because of that we could not able to achieve the low power consumption high speed low area that could not be achieved because it uses the non standard CMOS technology with this i'm uh, completing this programming technology topic next class we will start the commercially available fpgas thank you